Hello people on this earth and welcome back to my channel. My name is CG if you didn't know and today I have a really exciting video planned today because it's a little it's a little rainy day today and I just wanted to talk to you guys about my experience about waking up at 5 a.m. every single day for the past year and I actually started waking up at 5 a.m. for all school days this time last year. I started it in May and here we are one year later in the month of May and so I thought it'd be cool if I could like tell you guys the pros and cons about waking up at 5 a.m and yeah that's the whole video disclaimer though no i did not wake up every single day for a whole year waking up every day at 5 a.m technically means all the school days this past year i woke up at 5 or 5 40 latest um but yeah that's a disclaimer so not every single day but just school days <laughs> Okay, so I thought I'd open up this video with me telling you guys what a typical morning looks like for me. I've gone a whole year with fixing my method of waking up and fixing my schedule and seeing what works best for me as I do this like 5 a.m. for a year thing. It's come down to this. So I wake up at five, I give myself five to 10 minutes to wake up, stretch, yawn, whatever. It gives that like five to 10 minutes like waking period, like, okay, like, you can do this, get up, you know? And then I'll give myself some time to drink water, make the bed. Oh yeah, those two things are really important. Drinking water when you wake up and not like ice cold water. I mean like a room temperature water, room to warm temperature water is the best for when you're waking up. It's like, you might think, oh, okay, waking up with super cold ice water is gonna like wake me up. It shocks your body, so I mean, if you want to do that, I mean, I guess if you really need to do that, then you can, but I think it's better to wake up with like warm water to wake up your soul and your body and get ready for the day. Another thing that I added recently, um, I've gone on and off about this throughout the year, but I've been trying to make an effort these last couple months, is making your bed in the morning. I heard that if you make good habits, it's gonna affect the trajectory of your day. Cleaning up your room by picking up like, I don't know, three items, making your bed, those small habits can make your day a lot better. So now after I wake up, I drink some water, my water that's off my bed stand. It's actually right there. This is the bed stand, right here. So I keep my water there and so I drink water. I'm like, okay, waking up, we can do this. And then I make my bed. And I also think making your bed, it just makes your room look so much nicer. And once you clean your bed, you're like, okay, I kind of want to make my room a little bit more neater. So you might like pick up a thing there or like throw your laundry in. From 5 a.m. to 5.30, it's when I like do random miscellaneous things like drinking water, waking up, skincare, doing the bed, things like that. And then from 5.30 to about 6.50, I just do as much schoolwork as I can. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it. I've mentioned it a couple times, but I'm homeschooled actually. So I get to choose my own schedule anyways. And I just found that my productivity level is higher when I do school in the morning. So I try to do a lot of the schoolwork that I do by myself in the morning. And let me tell you guys, it's so quiet in my house. There's no one awake. And I just get to do my schoolwork in peace. Sometimes I can do school with noise because I have so many siblings, but like, it's nice to have a quiet morning time to do whatever you want, whether that be like work or like school, but that's just for me. So I can do my schoolwork and that's why I wake up early so I could get my school done. And then that just works for my personal schedule with my schoolwork. That's just when I can do the most school. And then at 6.50, I'll stop doing school and then go for my run. I just walk a mile and then run a mile. That's just like my requirement. And I just have to do that three times throughout the week. So usually I'll run on Mondays, Tuesdays, and then on Thursdays. But that is what a typical morning looks like for me. The biggest advice I would say for people who are like, how do you even wake up though? Like waking up, that's the hardest part, like getting out of bed. I heard it's like the three, two, one method or something where you're just like, if you need to do something, you just go like, okay, three, two, one. When I say one, get up and like, just go do it. And that's kind of, how I do it. And also for me, I kind of freak out if I don't start school every single day at the same time. So like, that's kind of my motivation. I'm like, okay, I gotta finish school. So those are like the priorities to do school. That's why I wake up at 5 a.m. That's like the main thing I want to accomplish in the morning time. I've also been prioritizing my sleep and I've been trying to aim for seven to eight hours. Usually it's like seven and a half, seven, but I try to aim to get eight hours of sleep because when you are a growing child, I don't know if I'm still growing, but <laughs> if you're a growing child, getting that sleep is really important. Another thing that I wanted to take into consideration is the amount of sleep I got and then the 
the prime hours of sleep. So the prime hours of sleep is from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. I think apparently around and that's when your body really needs to be recharging and getting ready for the next day and also producing all like the hormones and stuff I think. Um, yeah, you can research that. But 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is when your body needs sleep. So I try not to stay up late. Because I transform myself into a morning bird, I have to go to sleep at like 9. Like 9, I gotta be in bed. And you might be like, 9? That is so early. Yeah, the rest of my family thinks like that too. It's so funny because I'm the oldest child. So it's me, my brother, my brother, my brother, my sister, and then my other brother. My youngest brother, he's literally two years old. He goes to sleep later than me. That's how bad it is. So I'm the first one up and it's kind of hard to go to sleep because when I'm trying to like calm my nerves down and like go to sleep, they're just screaming and yelling and playing around because they don't wake up early and they're, they're night owls, I guess. They all are, even my two year old brother, he goes to sleep later than me, guys. But also waking up at 5 a.m. has really helped me to feel fulfilled and achieved throughout the day like waking up early i feel like i i'm just ready to set out on the rest of the day even though i kind of shut down at like 8 9 p.m i'm like guys i'm tired i need to get my eight seven to eight hours of sleep usually i try to be in bed by nine and then from nine to ten as long as it takes me to fall asleep because my siblings are loud <laughs> so my sleeping pattern is now set my body has become so accustomed to waking up at the same time and going to sleep around the same time every single day for the past year so even if i forget to set my alarm my body wakes me up at around 4 50. i like wake up i look at the clock and it's like 4 50 a.m and i'm like okay i got like 10 minutes of lounging time my body like kind of just wakes me up now like i'm ready to get out of bed by like 4 50 and that's a good thing and a bad thing this is where the pros and cons come out so pros are like oh you know get all my school done i feel achieved that girl era like but the biggest con is i can't sleep in guys you heard that right i can't sleep in anymore my body wakes me up around 6 6 30 without fail on weekends so <laughs> having a set sleep schedule engraven into your mind is a good thing and a bad thing because now I can't sleep in, like, ever. And also, I kind of turned into a little grandma. Like, I don't like going out late with my friends. I'm like, yeah, guys, I actually have, like, a thing. I actually just, like, want to go to sleep. So, it's kind of great that I wake up sometimes without an alarm, but also I can't sleep in anymore. So, if you want to sacrifice the ability to sleep in, because my body is like, come on, girl, like, what are you doing? Like, get up. It's literally, like, six. You, like, slept in an hour. I'm like, please, let me sleep. So, on Saturdays and Sundays, I wake up at six. So I turned into a little grandma, I turned into a little hermit, but my productivity levels are up and I prioritize my sleep. And again, this all works for me personally, like it might not work for you. I think the most important thing is having a schedule, like a sleeping schedule, so that your body isn't like, whoa, what are we doing? Oh, we're going to sleep late. Oh, we're waking up early. Oh, we're, no, we're not. Like you don't want it to be all confusing for your brain. So I think having a schedule is one of the biggest things, like keep a schedule. Another one of the biggest cons is because I turned into a little grandma, I get a little cranky at night because I'm like, I need to go to sleep. This message is for my family. Please go to sleep. So that's like one of the biggest cons because I'm kind of just like the party pooper and I want to go upstairs and be a little grandma and get my eight hours of sleep. But yeah, guys, that's basically it. Those are some of the pros and cons about my experience with waking up at 5 a.m. I'm probably going to continue this because it, it just works so well for me. I highly recommend that you try it out because, I don't know, maybe you'll really like the 5 a.m. that girl lifestyle and we can be buddies in waking up at 5 a.m. every day. But yeah, that's the end of this video, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed a little video about me talking about waking up at 5 a.m. every day. Comment down below if you would try it too. Bye!